Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, commonly known as ADHD, has historically been associated with children and males, but recent research sheds light on its prevalence and unique manifestations in women. Let's welcome back Dr. Christina Carmen, naturopathic doctor and nutritional therapist for Tiny Fish Company Nutrition and Functional Medicine. Dr. Carmen, it's so nice to have you back on the oh, show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So I want to talk about the key differences in how ADHD presents in a woman versus a man. Okay, so again, it's very individual. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the presentation um, is very individual based on obviously so many things, so many lifestyle factors, you know, how you handle stress, how you handle, handle emotions and behavior. Mm -hmm. But generally women um, with ADHD presentation will have much more of a fluctuation with their, um, maybe with their mood and emotions based on their hormonal cycle mm. because we're cyclical beings and we flow through um, fluctuations in our hormone where men tend to be a little bit more stable. So as far as presentation, it may come across as similar as far as the mood and behavior, but it will flow differently throughout the month simply because we're these cyclical beings. Mm -hmm. Do you ever see that some, it might take longer to diagnose a woman with ADHD because she's blaming this on her menstrual cycle and PMSing? Yeah, sometimes, and, and I think actually even conventional medicine has, hasn't really shed light to it. They've just kind of put us in this bucket where, oh, well, you're hormonal, you're going through puberty, um, that's all part of it. But actually, it, it warrants to dig a little bit deeper to see if maybe there is actually some, you know, neuro neurotransmitter um, imbalances or fluctuations that are actually, um, you know, influenced by the changes in hormones. Mm -hmm. So in addition to mood changes, what are some other things that hormonal fluctuations can s cause the more severe ADHD symptoms? So PMS is one of the ones that we look at. Mm -hmm. um, so that's premenstrual syndrome tends to, and again, this is general, so tends to be a little bit more severe or maybe a little bit more aggressive in those that have ADHD um, presentation, mm -hmm. is simply because estrogen plays a huge role with uh, our neurotransmitters, serotonin and dopamine. Mm -hmm. And you know, technically, when we look at ADHD, there tends to be a bit of a deficiency or an imbalance in these neurotransmitters. Mm -hmm. So we see that actually, um, we can see that, and as far as testing is concerned, mm -hmm. um, this fluctuation and this change. Mm -hmm. Now, are there certain you know periods of life, whether it's puberty, pregnancy, menopause? those times, do they exacerbate the symptoms? It can, it can very much so. So we'll see certainly the onset maybe in a, a pubescent female, we'll see maybe that's when an ADHD diagnosis comes into play because mm -hmm. that's when there's a really huge fluctuation as far as hormonal symptoms. Mm -hmm. Then again, during pregnancy, and again, obviously that perimenopause, menopause phase when there's a really big transition as far as the hormonal fluctuations. But I would say that it's still very prevalent even for women that don't fit into those categories. So if even if you're just, you know, let's say in a quote unquote normal cycling women or, uh, you know, with a normal menstrual cycle, um, we can still see this fluctuation as far as our mood is concerned and the way that, you know, we handle anxiety and stress and depression and, uh, you know, all these really heavy terms that we kind of put labels on, you know, if you, if you feel like there's something off in your body mm -hmm. um, and in how you're feeling, I definitely, definitely would urge to investigate a little deeper. Don't just let it brush, on, brush it under the rug or let even you know, other um, clinicians just brush it under the rug like, oh, well, you're just hormonal or you're just this. You know, it, there could be something else that's driving there, driving mm -hmm. that, and it could really be supported through maybe a holistic, uh, well-rounded approach. Mm -hmm. And now, do you have any, you know, supplement recommendations or even, you know, earlier we were talking and you mentioned like a, like a gluten monitor, a glucose monitor. Yeah. What would you recommend for someone who is, has ADHD and is struggling with the hormonal oh, fluctuation. Okay, so I think supplements, it's, it's uh, again, we're in a very much like a pill for every ill kind of culture, so I'm cautious when I would suggest specific things, always it's very individual depending on where you are. 
But one of the biggest things that we see is that there is a fluctuation with hormones and changes in our maybe neurotransmitter expression mm -hmm. um, with blood sugar. So you don't necessarily have to be diabetic or pre-diabetic or any of these things in order to maybe wear a continuous glucose monitor. That might be quite, quite a nice way of um, just understanding a little bit more of how your body responds to the foods that you're eating mm -hmm. during certain times of your month. You don't have to wear it forever. It might just be like a month or two and you kind of gauge to see under like what is typical for you as far as your response to food as you flow through your cycle mm -hmm. um, so you just understand your body a little bit better so that might be a really useful tool but there's other things that you can do to just monitor where you are as far as your as far as your sort of how you feel you know we live so much in our heads and don't actually listen to what is the body actually telling you yeah. you know what am I what's going on with me mm -hmm. you know and I think that's a really key thing just listen listen to your body's messages yeah. it tells us a lot Absolutely. Well, tinyfishco.com is where you can go to learn more about Dr. Carmen and the services you offer. And we are excited we have you back next Wednesday okay. to continue this ADHD conversation. Yeah. Dr. Carmen, thanks for joining me today. Thank you. We're back after this.